We are here today with Professor Galvis Tan, whose vast experience in the field of public health ranges from developing community-based health projects to national and international planning. He has previously worked in grassroots NGOs, government agencies, and international agencies such as the UN and the World Bank. Professor Galvis Tan joins us today from the Philippines, a country where healthcare, just like in India, is implemented under a decentralized setting. Thank you for joining us, Professor. Yes, of course, it's a pleasure. Can you explain to us what is the broad structure of the health system in the Philippines? Well, for the last 23 years since we implemented devolution and decentralization, uh, the structure have changed so much. Meaning to say, there is a national government called the Department of Health and it's still in charge of policy making, standards, regulation, and licensing, and plus other supervisory work of the local governments. Then the local governments, that means from the provinces to the cities, and the municipalities and villages are all now autonomous. Okay. Yes, not directly under the administrative supervision of the national government, but they do their own projects and programs with regards to health, depending again on their priorities. Yeah. How interesting. So how is a national insurance program implemented in such a decentralized setting? And also, what is the role of a community-based approach oh. in a decentralized setting? Well, before the Philippine National Health Insurance Program had to make partnerships with the local government, encouraging them to enroll the poor and the poorest. That was the original setup. But again, not all municipalities and provinces have the same economic resources. So some have real great difficulties enrolling. Now, when the alcohol and tobacco tax was passed, this contributed so far in the last uh, three years around 2.2 billion U US dollars to the fund. Thus, at least one half of these, or 50 percent, are now in the hands of the National Health Insurance Program, and they are tasked to enroll everyone. So meaning to say, before there was a relationship between the National Health Insurance and the local government, but right now, the National Health Insurance have the right to enroll everyone in the provinces. Again, right now, I would say that it is, uh, there has to be coordination mm. with the local government because local government's cooperation is still needed to enroll the people in the National Health Insurance Program. Right now, I would say that the National Health Insurance Organization is at the national and the regional level with okay. a few provinces. Okay. So which means to say that in areas where the Philippine National Health Insurance is not located, it has to be very clear how the relationship between the local government and the National Health Insurance Program has, yeah, that has to be firm. Now, regarding the community-based health program, yes. uh, that became a hallmark. However, in the last 15 years, because uh, again, corrupted by the political system in the Philippines, where in the villages were co-opted to be part of a national program. So in a sense, there was some distortion of the implementation of this. So in a sense, what has happened is that uh, community-based health programs have been totally abandoned. Okay. Yes. But for me, this would be the hallmark because when we talk of universal health care and universal social health insurance, it means it is available, available at the village level. And it can only be available if a village is organized into community-based health programs wherein there could be increased coordination and participation of the population in health care. Yeah. So this is very essential for me as a firm believer in primary health care and community-based health program. Empowerment of the people, community participation, and community involvement are essential in the delivery of total health services. So if 
India developed a similar national insurance program. What lessons could India take from the Philippines in order to implement this program more effectively? Yes, the major lesson is that you must have the money. <laughs> so put your money where your mouth is. When the law on the national health insurance was created, actually I was the Minister of Health, and I lobbied for it personally with the president and our Congress or Parliament, and it was passed during my, during my time. However, we knew at the very start, we wanted to have a compulsory social health insurance, but we knew we did not have the funds. Mm. So probably it's always a chicken and egg. Do you need to have the fund or do you need to have the law of a national health insurance? And this is now what we call a single fund, which means a single payer. In most countries, you know, like even Singapore, there are many payer, payers of the health insurance. But this time in the Philippines, we have only one. And probably that's also my suggestion. <laughs> but India being vast and what large and one billion. What are the advantages billion, of having yeah. one? Well, that means it's a very respected and there's only one standard and everybody follows the law in terms of, because it, uh, the national health insurance can set up also additional standards, regulations, and recognition of health facilities as well as health personnel, wherein they will be able to, to fund uh, the different health services that are benefiting the people. The second lesson probably I would say that uh, India can learn from our national health insurance is that um, it has to be very clear what will be the services okay. that will be available and funded by the national government and even by the local government. So although as of now, because our national health insurance is awash with cash, it is also trying to implement a uniformity across the, the municipalities, the provinces, and the cities. So right now, what is happening is that the, the cities are able, to, are able to respond to the health services and the according to the national health insurance. However, the provinces and municipalities are still having a difficulty because of the equity, as I will explain yes. later, yeah, in terms of funds being received by the municipalities. So again, another example is that initially, our health insurance was only reimbursing hospital expenses, meaning okay. to say you have to be confined in a hospital, but we all know that 90% of the people have literally no physical access to a hospital. Yes. They're quite far from the rural areas or from the municipalities. So, but the law was guaranteeing that all services, particularly outpatient care or primary health care, and even community-based health programs, were going to be supported by the national health insurance. However, this has not transpired. It's, again, it has to be a true commitment of the National Health Insurance Administration to implement this. There are now plans to launch the outpatient care and primary care services by 2016. So it's only by then that uh, this will be implemented. Do you face the issue where because insurance is providing access, the providers themselves are over-prescribing drugs and diagnostic tests? Again, this is another test, although the law, again, as we have designed it, we, that there has to be an area fund or a global fund. These are national health insurance terminologies okay. instead of a fee for service. Okay. The fee for service, which means to say for every service you pay, has a tendency to be corrupted, meaning to say private practitioners or even government can make up ghost patients and ghost hospitalization, meaning to say they can create this reimbursement and able to get away with it as has been proven. 
So there's a tendency to abuse the fee for service. And I'd like to relate this to India. Yes, please. In the sense that this will not be repeated uh, in India, but a global fund, meaning to say a whole municipality or a whole province will have a, an area fund to support all the services. So, I mean, it's a very complex idea, but it is the old way. These have been implemented mainly in Japan, in Korea, okay. in Canada, and yes. in Germany. These were the great inspirations for us. And even Thailand. While Thailand was late in implementing the, their National Health Insurance Fund, it was able to learn lessons enough from the Philippines to start a global fund. Thank you, Professor. Yes. Professor Galvestan highlights that while it's important for national health strategies to be well-funded, these funds need to percolate down to the grassroots level. It is therefore important to engage, involve, and develop community-based organizations.